In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the JavaScript console. The JavaScript console is actually under Tools, JavaScript console. And this will show you any warnings or errors that your JavaScript code might have. It will also show you the JavaScript errors in anybody else's code. If we were running at a higher resolution, we actually see another button on our web developer bar for the JavaScript console. But we don't have that luxury here, so we're going to rely on this. Let's go ahead and leave this open and actually see it in action. Create a new website. Website 3 is not a good name. JavaScript console. Make sure this is legal. We're not going to be using any of this right now. So, let's just go ahead and create something with some JavaScript. As you can see, I have an error in my code. So let's go ahead and save this. And here we actually have to disable the NTLM. It's on by default. And then, let's go for it. Okay. Now if we look at our JavaScript console, we actually see there's an error. We can see what the error is, the line number, and what it looks like. We can also click on it. It's exactly where the error is. As, as you can see immediately, we actually have another benefit of nicely color-coded syntax in Firefox. So now I can see our error. Let's go back and fix our error. Save. And reload. There we go. This will be tremendously helpful, obviously, but Sometimes we do silly things in our code that won't really throw an error. For example, if we declare a variable and then declare the variable again. And any other programming system, for example, a strongly typed programming system, we'd get an error. But here, we won't get anything. Or rather, anything in here. Now, you see there's no error, no warnings, nothing. But that's not good coding. What we need to do is turn something on in Firefox so we can actually see warnings. Firefox actually has an entire built-in registry, much like the Windows registry. You just get to it by about, colon, config. As you can see, there are tons of options in here for you to change. You can change anything from the delays of the rendering on a screen to how many downloads you can have on one website. There are a ton of things in here, and most of them are actually undocumented. You just type them in manually. What we're looking for is actually on the list. Option strict. Let's can double click, make it true, and our code should actually show warnings. There we go. Redeclaration of var a. Now we can actually catch our silly mistakes before they go into production. That's basically all there is to the JavaScript console. But you'll notice that you'll be able to see many, many, many things in here. For example, if I refresh, they'll just continue to compound. We can erase, and we can go to other websites and see other people's errors. And there, warnings. They obviously don't have any. But some other websites will.
You can also filter down by seeing only errors, only warnings, or just custom messages. You can actually turn on and off your strict warnings right here to make it easier on you. Furthermore, you can filter down by certain things you're only looking for. For example, if you're running your Gmail, which has many JavaScript warnings, but no errors, in one tab, and you're doing your development in another, you might actually see a lot of overlap and have a hard time finding your errors in the midst of the warnings from Gmail. So what you can do is, actually, if you're over here, you can just filter down. It's going to filter by local host. So now if we go to any other websites, we'll only see ours. So that's basically the basics of using the JavaScript console.